Welcome to this devotional. I'm Kaylee, and for the next five days, I'm going to be talking to you about the holiness of God. Now, my hope for anyone doing this devotional is that by using the Word of God to further understand His holiness and just who He is, is that there would be a fear of the Lord instilled in us and a reverence for Him. Now, if you don't know what either of those things are, do not worry. I will explain later on in this devotional. So real quick, I'm just going to start off by praying. And you can either watch me awkwardly on the other side of the screen, or you can pray with me. Okay, let's get started. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for today. And I just ask that you would use me as your mouthpiece to talk about your holiness and who you are, Jesus. And I just ask that you would soften the hearts of the students on the other side, and you instill a fear of the Lord and a reverence for you so that we can grow in our relationship with you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Okay, so first things first, we gotta ask, what does it even mean to be holy? So when we go to the scripture, when we go to the Bible, you will find that oftentimes the word holy is used to separate um, the, the person or the thing being described as holy. Um, oftentimes that's obviously God, um, or maybe it's not obvious, but um, oftentimes it's being used to describe God. And so, for example, we see this in 1 Samuel 2, 2, where it says that there is no one holy like the Lord. Indeed, there is no one besides thee, nor is there any rock like our God. Um, so when I was doing research for this, uh, there's this dude named R.C. Sproul, who is a theologian, which if you don't know what a theologian, it's just someone who studies the nature of God. So there's this quote by him that I really think does a really good job of summing up what the Bible means when it says that God is holy. So the quote basically says that when the Bible calls God holy, it means primarily that God is transcendently separate. He is so far above and beyond us that he's almost foreign to us. To be holy is to be other, to be different in a special way. And this um, explanation of the Bible describing God as holy is clearly seen in 1 Samuel 2 too, because they're using the word holy to say that there is no one and nothing like the Lord, that nothing even compares to God, that no one and nothing is even in the same league as the Lord. Okay. So to further understand this separateness and this like this holiness, for the next five days, I'm going to be diving into Isaiah chapter 6, and we're going to be breaking it down um, from verses 1 through 8. So today we're only going to be doing uh, verses 1 through 3. Um, so if you don't have your Bibles out, get them out. Mine, I'm reading in the ESV, just a heads up. So if you're reading in a different version and you're like, wait, what? It's not the same. It's because it's a different version. Okay. So in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim. Each had six wings. With two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one called to another and said, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. So in summary, Isaiah is having Isaiah is having this vision where he is witnessing the Lord sitting upon his throne in all of his majesty and there are these things called seraphim which are basically just like these fiery angelic angels. They're not like normal angels. They're kind of, they're a lot more powerful and it, the book of Revelation talks about it if you want to do some more study on that. But there are these really powerful beings and it says that they have six wings, which is um, something trying to like illustrate they are really powerful. And um, with two of their wings, it says they cover their face. With two of their wings, they cover their feet. And with two, they're flying. So even these powerful fiery angelic beings have to cover themselves before the Lord because even they can't look upon his face. He's just so holy and so good that like nothing compares to him. Like they cannot look at him. Um, and it says that they cry out to one another, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. They're proclaiming his holiness. He is, God is so holy that they can't help but to worship him. And um, so my question for anyone watching is like, what would you do if you were in Isaiah's position and you were witnessing all this go down? If you were seeing the majesty of the Lord, um, and it's crazy that this is happening because 
um, when you look at other books in the Bible, like, for example, if you look at um, in Exodus 33, it says, it talks about Moses dialoguing with God, and he's asking God, like, Lord, I want to see your glory, like, show me your face, and God says, no, like, I'm not going to show you my face, because if you see my face, you're, you're going to die, like, it will destroy you, and um, so, yeah, and you might be asking, like, why is this important, like, this kind of is painting God as to be kind of scary, I don't know, and the point when I, what, like, the point that I'm trying to make with this is that these verses show how important it is to have reverence for God. And if you don't know what reverence is, like I said earlier, reverence is to have a deep respect for God and to live your life in awe of who he is. Just as we talked about before, even the seraphim, these angelic, fiery beings, these powerful beings, they're morally perfect creatures, they cover themselves because even they cannot look upon the face of the Lord. Um, and I think this is so important also because I think in today's modern society as Christians, we forget who we're talking to when we come before the Lord in prayer. We forget who God is. We think that he's like some genie in a bottle, genie in a bottle who bends to our will. No, 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 boo-boo. We bend to his will. When you become a Christian, you bend to his will. Don't get me wrong. The Lord is gracious and he's kind and he's slow to anger, but he's also the creator of the universe. And so I want you guys to think about that when you're every time that you're coming before him, like thinking like, wow, like I get to communicate and I get to be in relationship with the creator of the universe. So that's just something I want you guys to think about before we, we meet again. And um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you learned something from it. And um, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.